Hey guys, so I decided to do an overview of, um, I guess, all of the relevant changes um, for the, at least for the average player, that are have been implemented in the 361 from 360 in uh, NetHack. So what I have in front of me, this is the, the full change log for NetHack 361, and I've I've actually opened up in a, a Word document just so I could kind of highlight and annotate things. So I've spent feels like quite a few hours going through this and kind of picking out um, all the relevant uh, pieces. Um, things that I think will be either pretty big changes or things that might affect the player experience even slightly or just different things I picked out for one reason or another. So I'm gonna go through here. Um, just to get started, uh, I think there's probably about like three categories I'd put the changes into. There's bug fixes, um, which is what a lot of these items are. And those are things that you probably want to run into in an average game. But they end up in very specific circumstances, but then you can, you know, crash your game and have it be unrecoverable or whatnot. So um, they're definitely good things to get fixed, even if they're pretty um, specific situations that most players will never run into in all their time of playing. Um, there's a lot of quality of life improvements, um, different like menu fixes and options. Um, so that's nice. And then there's also just balance and general gameplay changes. And um, those are probably the big ones for most people. And we'll take a look at those as well. Um, so I'm just going to go through this in one take and see how it goes. I'm just going to go through in the order that things are listed in this change log. And hopefully we can get through it uh, pretty quickly here. So this will be a, a nice quick reference for people um, if they need it. So uh, let's get started. Uh, let's see, our first one, falling asleep when reading a dull spellbook, um, ignored sleep resistance. So in 360, they added dull spellbooks. Well, I think the dull spellbooks were always there, but they added this effect. Um, there's a chance when you read them that your character falls asleep. So um, that doesn't happen in 361 if you have sleep resistance. Uh, it used to occur always in 360. Um, stack splitting for dipping large quantities of potions was done poorly. So there's a quality of life improvement. I don't know the specific changes there, but um, they've made um, just how things split. And they, they did a lot of fixes for stacking things in general um, in 3.6.1. So just more quality of life improvements. I make travel walk up to a trap and stop when the trap blocks the only way forward instead of trying to go in a straight line. So you won't walk in the track uh, traps when um, auto-traveling. Um, there's actually been a lot of auto-travel changes as well. Um, travel will displace pets rather than stop. So stuff like that. Again, quality of life fixes. Let's see, do not auto pick up unpaid items in shops. So if you have auto pickup on, I won't pick up anything in shops um, that are unpaid and lying on the ground. Um, I actually wish that was kind of a, an option you could set because sometimes I like to just auto pick up everything in a shop and then drop it and look at all the prices and price ID at once. Um, but in general, um, usually you turn off auto pick when you walk into a shop because it can be annoying. So overall, that's a pretty good change there. Um, actually make the castle chest not trapped. I think that got broken in 360 because um, I think in 343 net hack it was not trapped and then I think in 360 it became a possibility of being trapped which was really problematic. Um, of course this is talking about the, the chest in the castle with the one of wishing. So you could end up with an exploding chest trap and then lose the one of wishing which is a pretty um, essential part of the game um, for most playthroughs. So. Um, and making that so that can't be trapped anymore was a pretty big um, a big fix there. They toned down the energy vortexes uh, drain energy attack. So energy vortexes in 360, they added an energy drain attack to it that drains your power. And I believe it will even drain, actually not that I believe it, it will drain your max power if you reduce to zero. So it can be a pretty big deal if you have trouble killing it fast enough. Um, so the, and it was pretty severe in 360. It was 4d6 um, power drain, but now it's been brought down to 2d6 in 361. So to make them like a little less uh, threatening in that regard. See, when a pet moves reluctantly, name the top pile of the item and is reluctant to step on if the hero sees or remembers any objects at that spot. So yeah, instead of just saying your pet walks reluctantly onto a you know a, a tile, it'll just name whatever's on top. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's the um the cursed item in that pile but uh it's just you know another something a little more descriptive for you 
They make monsters forget where they stepped when fleeing or teleporting. I'm pretty sure the intent here is to make it so monsters will actually run away when they're scared instead of just doubling back and attacking on you. Um, this is a very common thing in corridors. Um, if you use any any means of scaring a monster, um, they monsters in general, um, just so they don't um, oscillate, they, they're they reluctant to turn back on the same scores that they've been on before. So a lot of times you'd scare something instead of running, they would be stuck there between you and where they wanted to run to because they just were on that square. And they would... Um, end up just attacking you again, which was a, a weird way to handle scared monsters that should be fleeing. And it was really annoying and a cause of very frustrating deaths. Um, like I said, it happened in corridors a lot. So you make the Raven Medusa level short-sighted. Um, I actually don't know what that means. I, I meant to look that up. I didn't realize I still had that highlighted. Um, so I'll have to, to figure that out. Um, I, did pl I have played the Raven Medusa level in 361 and haven't really noticed any significant changes, so... We'll have to take a look um, at what that actually means there in the future, but not right now. So covetous monsters may choose to teleport to downstairs or ladders. So in dungeon branches that go down instead of up, um, the uh, covetous monsters, which are monsters that just teleport to the stairs and to the player, um, like arc liches and uh, your quest nemesis and stuff, um, whatnot, they will actually teleport downstairs and go downstairs instead so this um you'll probably notice it the most in vlad's tower vlad will actually teleport to the it's actually a ladder i guess in the tower but the the downstairs and start running away from you that way so um before they would have no way to turn so um, interesting little change there um, i think that just makes behavior pretty consistent for covetous monsters in those situations uh, let's see, support globs for edibility, temporary intrinsic, and restore the ability to gain intrinsics from black puddings. So 360 turned pudding, brown and black pudding corpses, into globs. Um, well, it actually did it for uh, great oozes and probably slimes as well, um, but it's only really relevant for brown and black puddings. Um, when you ate them, they no longer gave intrinsics, which was a pretty big nerf to that, because that um, they're, they're a pretty good source for intrinsics. So now they, they fixed that. Uh, revise it so you can get intrinsics from the globs that they drop now. Uh, limit monster spell aggravate monsters to either outside or inside the wizard's tower. So there's this pretty frustrating bug. Well, actually, I'll take that back because I use this to my advantage a lot in 3.6.0. But basically, um, if there is a spellcaster in the wizard's tower or on the, the map that the wizard's tower is on, if they cast aggravate monsters on you, it'll wake up the Wizard of Yendor and he'll come to you. And usually that's something that they want you want to like pick. You want to know when you wake him up because he harasses you for the rest of the game once that happens. So usually people don't do that right away and they come back later to, to deal with it. So um, in 360, you had to like be very alert of any spell casters that are on the Wizard's Tower level because they could just make your game much more difficult for the rest of the game if you weren't aware of that. Um, so now it doesn't cross the boundary of his wall, so it basically fixes it without making aggravate monster useless on the level. Um, and the one situation I was talking about where I kind of use that to my advantage is in 360, what I started doing was teleporting to his level outside the walls, and I would drink a potion, a cursed potion of blindness, um, or I'm sorry, a cursed potion of invisibility, which um, causes aggravate monsters on you, and then you could get him to come out of the tower like that. So uh, that was a pretty useful tactic that no longer works, but th that was kind of a bug exploit anyway, so um, this was a good change. So corpses obtained from tipping an icebox when it run away. And that was an interesting change, uh, mostly because you could get a, a cockatrice corpse that never rotted <laughs> um, through exploiting this, um, so they fixed that. Wizard uh, will now steal any quest artifact from the hero, not just own rolls. So you used to be safe having a quest artifact with magic resistance um, against the, the Wizard of Yendor. That wasn't your own, because he would steal your own. So you could have um, another quest artifact and be safe from him stealing that and then casting Touch of Death on you, um, which would kill you if you don't have magic resistance. Uh, but now he'll steal any quest artifact, so you need some other source of magic resistance if you want to be completely safe from that. Um, so that was a pretty big change. Well, not huge, but it's a pretty important one. 
to stop amulets and other items which aren't affected by erosion damage from being subjected to erosion damage. Um, that's just kind of cleaning up the, I guess, the, the item descriptions. So rings and amulets would, would become eroded, but it really didn't have any, had zero gameplay effects, so it doesn't happen anymore. Uh, tweak Beelzebub's lair and clean up the map display for it. Um, they added like iron, well, with iron bars added in 360. I don't know, but they changed just the way the map looks a little bit. I didn't realize this, but it previously, but it's, it's made to look like a fly, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Simple set definitions didn't recognize um, as dark room and vibrating square. So I believe what this does is now you can put custom um, symbol definitions for the vibrating square, which is nice. And also it's a it's a tilde. And that's actually a change listed later in the change log, but they change it from a trap symbol to a tilde symbol in 361 as well. So it's easier to to identify. Let's see, shopkeepers now correctly handle nested containers and golden containers. Um, so I don't know about the nested containers part because I never mess with that, but the golden containers thing used to be able to um, do a credit cloning bug that involved um, putting gold in containers and removing it, and the, the shopkeepers wouldn't correctly remove it from your credit. Um, so this um, essentially fixes that bug. It's the most noteworthy effect of that. Sort loot change to place diluted potion of foo after potion of foo instead of listing all diluted potions followed by all non-diluted ones. Um, that's a nice um, just inventory sorting uh, fix that they did. So now all your, you know, especially when you're doing like alchemy, all your diluted potions of extra healing will be right next to your potions of extra healing um, instead of being, you know, placed separately on the list. So I think that's a very nice fix. I find that to be um, very, very helpful just for, you know, kind of quickly seeing what you have in your inventory. Let's see, show inventory, or show in inventory which monster a leash is attached to. Nice little uh, descriptive quality of life fix there. Void ring of poison resistance to starting equipment for Orcish Wizard. Um, yeah, that kind of an annoying thing to get if you already have poison resistance. That's a nice change. The Lembus wafer gives increased nutrition to elves, decrease and reduced nutrition to orcs, and cram rations give increased nutrition to dwarves. So this is kind of this racial. Um, nutrition bonuses and penalties for, for certain food items that are associated with certain races. Um, so Lemus Wafers give an extra 200 nutrition to elves and um, a reduced 200 to orcs. So that's what, 1,000 and 600 respectively, I believe, because I think they're base 800. And cram rations give a, an increased 100 nutrition to dwarves. See, any corpse eaten by um, omnivorous hero always tasted terrible. So um, pretty much every corpse you ate um, would always taste terrible so now um you get this message that just just says it tastes okay and that's one of the one of the more obvious changes or one of the more apparent ones that people see and they're always kind of confused by that so um, it doesn't actually change anything but just the description of eating a corpse um i think one of the reasons they may have done that was because people new players would see that a corpse tasted terrible and would think they probably shouldn't eat that and which was Often not the case. Um, and it didn't discriminate between good or bad um, corpses for eating, so everything just tastes okay now. You sometimes generate the random mazes with wide corridors, thick walls, or with dead ends change to loops. So maze levels um, have a little more variety here. Um, it makes uh, Gehenna a little less tedious. And also the wide corridors makes it um, a lot easier to find the, the stairs without having to, you know, tediously walk through the maze or use magic mapping um the the widest version of the wide corridor mazes you can pretty much go through them and find the stairs without um any problems so you put throne room golden chest so instead of having gold on every tile in a throne room it's now located in the chest um there's another throne room one i'll just touch on now um there's also a king in every throne room so um it, it i believe he spawns in the same tile as the throne and it's, it's, so you'll end up with an ogre king, or I guess like a dwarf king. I don't know what all the, the varieties are, but there's some kind of king in each throne room now. And they also have a, like a scepter or like a mace. So just to make that a scepter pounded in judgment, um, you know, level flavor, um, audible informa information that you get that just tells you that there's a throne room there. Um, it just kind of gives some character to that, I guess. Let's see, movement speeds are made less predictable by using random rounding rather than via adding a random offset. So 360, they added um, a random speed modifier at, at the end of every um, monster's turn, which would basically make it so you couldn't predict, you know, to the 
to the, the turn to the movement point um when every monster would act so you couldn't like kite slower monsters and or know when they were going to get extra turns and everything so now um so the randomization they added in 360 um i believe it randomized between negative one and plus two speed points so there was like a slightly um every every monster had a slightly increased speed which was kind of annoying for monsters that were supposed to be equal speed to the player um speed 12 monsters because you couldn't run away from them at the same speed that they chased you they would get free attacks on you so um this uses random rounding which means uh, monsters that are faster than average um it's just it's a probabilistic chance now basically so you can't predict exactly which turn that's going to happen on but it's also makes it so speed 12 monsters um will move at the same pace as the player uh, assuming the player has base speed 12. Um, so that was a pretty good change there uh, i think that kind of accomplished what their in, the intention of the 360 speed changes um, without making it any uh, more difficult on the player um, that was unintended let's see show all status line information and attributes um so yeah that's um it's also control x i've never used the extended command for that um, it gives you just some information about your player, so uh, it more, tells you more things now. I don't use that command that much to begin with, so I don't know what it told you before, but it'll tell you like if you're hungry or levitating and stuff now. Um, so I assume, just because of this note, that it's a little more descriptive than it was before. So you add option status updates to prevent um, bottom of screen status line updates. Um, I don't know why I marked that. I think I meant to look at that up. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what that does. Um, but there's a, a new status option there that I guess I'll have to look up now or later, but not now. Let's see, using a curse whistle in a vault will summon the guard immediately. Uh, I just thought that was an interesting change, so I just marked it. Um, throne room's throne is occupied by a king, so uh, we already talked about that. See, so when the amulet increased spell casting costs, nothing actually happened, um, aside from the message about feeling the amulet during the hero's power. If the hero lacks sufficient energy to cast the spell, I wasn't sure exactly what this entailed, so I actually tested it. So if you don't have enough energy to cast a spell, um, you still get drained, I believe. Um, you don't cast a spell, and then it just says you don't ca have enough energy to cast that spell. Uh, I believe that's how that happens. And I guess I didn't notice an amulet message when I tested that. Let's see, adjust the candelabrum's weight when candles are attached. So, um, yeah, once you put candles previously into the candelabrum, it used to just remove them from your inventory, and that, that weight just kind of disappeared, which was just kind of inconsistent. It just didn't really make a lot of sense, so uh, that doesn't happen anymore. You used to be able to just you know, start applying candles whenever you wanted to that, um, you know, up to its maximum, just to, to reduce some, some weight in your inventory. It was just kind of an opt optimal tactic to use, um, but... You can't do that anymore. It uh, adds the weight to the candelabrum. It improves highlight status, um, allowing multiple stops for field and temporarily or permanently highlighted fields. Um, so this highlight status is what replaced the status highlights in 3.6.0, which status highlights was a patch to begin with. I don't believe that was an original 3.4.3, but pretty much anyone that played NetHack at all was playing with that. Um, and that basically adds color to your like health and um, your different attributes and stats at the bottom of the screen um, for different situations. Highlight status was kind of broken in 3.6.0. It, it, it had very limited functionality and didn't really work as intended. So they fixed that and, and added a lot of functionality to it. Um, if you want more information on that, you can check the guidebook, um, the NetHack guidebook. It's on the you know, nethack.org, the, the website. Um, and I also think the, the wiki has been updated to be pretty descriptive about that. So I actually haven't gone through my um, config file yet to tweak mine now that that's changed. That's something I have on my, my list to do here soon. But yeah, that's, um, I think a lot of people are going to be happy to, to know that. So recovery of strength lost due to weakness from hunger was vulnerable to abuse. So yeah, you used to be able to get weak, which reduces your strength. Um, get weak due to being hungry. And then you used to be able to fix that weakness with, you know, like a unicorn horn or something. And then when you got um, not hungry anymore, if you ate something, it would raise your strength above what it was initially. 
So it, it was a really easy way to just, you know, max your strength, honestly. So they, they fixed that, which is a, a good bug fix there. So a hero could cast spells while polyed into a form which can't speak or while being strangled. Um, so now you can't cast spells when you, uh, you can't vocalize the words. So it, it, um, the message is you're unable to chant the incantation. So um, I don't think there's a ton of situations where that applies. Um, I don't polymorph much. I don't know if there's any favorable um, polyforms that you know can't speak that you'd want to cast spells with. Um, if there were, then they probably aren't that favorable um, in some situations now. Um, and that also applies to when you, you're being strangled, which I think only occurs when you have an amulet of strangulation. Um, I'm not sure if there are any other situations where you're strangled. Um, it's pretty rare either way, but um, yeah, you can't cast spells if you can't speak anymore. Let's see, sometimes rings dropped into sinks can be found in the pipes. So yeah, if you dig up a sink that you dropped rings down, um, there's a tw I believe there's a 20% chance that the ring um, actually survives and you'll be able to, to dig it up from under the sink afterwards. Let's see, Charisma affects the leeway in Demon Lord bribes. Um, I just thought that was interesting. Um, I didn't find any information on this. I didn't look it up. I didn't, I didn't spend too much time like digging into it, but um, I guess you can't just... I, I don't know, I guess your Charisma affects what, what bribes Demon Lords will take from you now. So... Um, they used to uh, just accept whatever they asked for, so um, I'm not really sure 100% how that um, actually affects the game as far as like what they ask you for and whatnot, um, but your charisma does affect it. Let's see, makes Vlad slightly tougher. Um, so Vlad got a little stronger. Um, I haven't noticed him being terribly strong. Actually, I may have had like, I may have use cockatrice corpses to kill him in the 361 games I've played so far, um, which would make this kind of negligible um, from my perspective. So I've really noticed how much tougher he got. I think he had, he'd have to become a lot stronger to really be noticeable to the player at that point in the game. Um, but he was one of the new, well, yeah, he was a notoriously um, wimpy um, enemy in uh, previous versions of NetHack, so they decided to make him a little tougher. And that co combined with that new Covenous uh, monster movement um, definitely makes him, if not straight tougher, um, a little more annoying or difficult to defeat because of his movement pattern as well. Let's so reduce the amount of gold laying on the floor. So yeah, there's less gold generated in the dungeon, um, basically. Um, the first 361 game I played, I didn't really notice much of an effect from this. Um, I saw it, but I didn't notice much of an effect. Um, the last game I played, though... I didn't. I really like never ended up with enough money to to buy protection, and such. So um, I did notice it there. So um, I guess I'm gonna need some more games in to really see how significant this is. But yeah, you'll find less gold in the dungeon. And I will say, in previous versions of NetHack, uh, three four three and six three six zero, you ended ended up with a ton of gold. Um, you know, by the mid game, really. So um, overall, this is probably a a good change. I just don't know how big of an impact it's going to have on all my future games yet. Yeah. See, locked chests and large boxes contain more stuff. Um, I just marked that because I didn't realize that was a change and it seems appropriate and I like it. More stuff is always good. Let's see, if a fiery monster wanted to fire or fire explosion burned up a paper golem, it could still leave blank scrolls. Um, so yeah, if you uh, kill a paper golem with fire, I guess you don't get blank scrolls anymore. So just keep that in mind. And that's definitely something that makes sense. See, shopkeepers in their own shop and priests in their own temple are no longer frightened by heroes standing on a scroll of scare monster. Um, so, where you would see this a lot is if you dropped all your scrolls on a an altar to identify them or to to test their beatitude. If one of those scrolls was scare monster and the, the priest in the temple was standing next to you, you would scare the priest. And what would happen? Is if then you want to chat with the priest to you know give a donation, the priest would get hostile and probably kill you. Um, I, I guess similar stuff happened to shopkeepers. I don't know um, when a shopkeeper might go hostile from being frightened, but now they they don't care if they're in their own shop or temple. So I think that's a pretty good fix just to remove that unexpected frustration that came from getting a hostile um, priest on you. 
which is definitely something very annoying that would occur and it wasn't very obvious. I think it would catch a lot of people off guard if they didn't know about it. Um, and also the wizard angels and lawful minions, um, the riders and shopkeep slash priests in own room are never frightened by tooled horns. So that right there is actually the entire list of things that are immune to scare monster scrolls uh, right now. So um, you can't scare them with a, a tooled horn now. I'm not sure how leather drums affect that. Um, but I assume that was a bug and that tooled horns could bother them to begin with. Definitely doesn't make a lot of sense. Here's a list of things that apply to like specific terminals and, and whatnot and displays. All right, general new features. So here's a lot of the even more impactful stuff, I think. Uh, so uh, naming Sting or Orcrist now breaks the illiterate conduct. I think the flavor is there that you actually have to inscribe um, the name onto it. Just be aware of that um, if you are attempting that conduct. See, so, yeah, um, allow moving cursor with monsters with or to monsters with M and capital M when asked for map locations or to objects with O and O. So they made a lot of tweaks um, to, so this is um, for map locations for either like, I guess teleporting or far look or like any time that you have a cursor and you need to, to go find something. They made a lot of tweaks. So there's more than just this M and O. Um, and I didn't, take note of them all here just because there's a lot of them and they're just kind of scattered throughout the change log. So you can look that up um, on your own if you're curious. Um, but even beyond just this feature, actually let's let's take a look at it right now, why don't we? So if you hit M as a prefix and then underscore, which is the far travel, uh, fast travel, you get more options now. You get this screen, which is pretty neat. Um, I think if you do fast travel, this is what happens if you travel without that. If you do a question mark, you get a lot more options now. So you can see here, here's the M, O, D, X, A. So um, actually forget going through the, the change log, like I just said, if you want to be curious about them, just use the question mark prompt when that comes up. And this is, pretty much all new. Um, a lot of this is done for accessibility, I believe, um, but it's also just a, a lot of it's just convenience and, you know, just a, like I was talking about quality of life improvement um, to the, these prompts um, and these screens. Um, you can uh, fast move, which is HGAKL, so eight units at a time. So um, that's a pretty nice change there, I think. Um, that applies to far look as well. Oops. Your question mark and you can you do the same thing so that's um what's there so they made a lot of uh, improvements there let's see dissolve iron bars by force fighting with wielded potion of acid so i'm um, just uh another way to destroy iron bars if you have a potion of acid um, it gives a little bit of extra utility to the potion of acid which honestly doesn't have a ton of utility right now um and just another way to deal with iron bars so that's a that's a fun change um, i don't believe throwing a potion at the the bars does anything. I think it goes right through the bars, actually. Um, not 100% on that, but I, I, I tried throwing potions at iron bars and I couldn't get them to dissolve, so pretty sure it only applies if you wield the potion and then um, force fight at it, which is when you hit um, capital F and then a direction key. And I'll remove the iron bars for you. Let's see, uh, poison breath leaves a trail of poison gas. Um, that's a pretty cool effect. So um, I believe what certain dragons and iron golems have poison breath. Um, there might be something else I'm forgetting. So there, it leaves a poison gas cloud um, in its wake as well. Let's see, new status line conditions for um, being stoned, strangled, deaf, levitation, um, flying, or riding. So you'll now see them at the, you know, your. At your status line where you normally see things like burdened or hungry. Um, it also gives you some some indicators like that. It's really convenient for stuff like levitation, uh, but it's also just good to know if you're being stoned or strangled or if you're deaf. So um, that's a really great change in my opinion. So the default value for the vibrating square symbol has changed from a yellow uh, carrot, the trap symbol, to a purple tilde. 
Um, so yeah, I mentioned that before. So that's just a, a nice way to more quickly identify the vibrating square. Um, it is still detected by detect trap methods. Um, I don't know. Hmm. Can we test this real quick? I'm kind of curious if that will impact um, like crystal balls. So let's test it live. Why don't we? Because I don't know the answer to that. Um, so I'm in whiz mode right now. Let's go. Let's see, so this should be the vibrating square level. Um, let me get a blessed crystal ball. How about Some blessed potions of gainability. Just to improve my chances here. And then let us apply the crystal ball. What happens if I look for... Interesting. So yeah, just traps. Oh wait, I'm in the... This is the Sanctum. I gotta go up one level. Okay, let's try that again. Try the Crystal Ball. Try it again. Try it again. Um, you'll notice here, it's bringing up the my inventory instead of the, the short list of letters. Um, that, that's an option, that's um, a new change as well. And I guess um, it's applied by default in the Windows version. So I think that would normally just give you a list of letters to apply, and that's something that a lot of people have wanted. So I'm just pointing that out. Uh, so yeah, so, oh, that's not working. So what if I do the tilde? Oh, does that not even work? Did that work before? Interesting. Oh, it's because I have no charges. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't think it would even ask me to look for a symbol if it had no charges. Let's charge that up. There we go. Uh, for some reason I thought that would fix confusion. All right, now let's try this. There we go, so it does work. You can see that tilde over there, right here, is the vibrating square. All right. Um, I just wanted to confirm that, so there you go, a little bit of uh, live spading there into the new NetHack mechanics. Let's see, interrupt a multi-turn action if HP or power is restored to maximum. Um, basically what that does is you'll get a message um, when you your um, HP or power returns to its max um, from, you know, just standard, um, you know, health and power recovery. And because it gives you that message, it'll, you know, if you hit, you know, wait 100 turns just because you want to heal, it'll interrupt that so you don't waste any turns healing up. So that's a pretty nice change there, too. I used to wait in like small increments just so I didn't like waste a bunch of turns. So I like that. And it'll also, that might be annoying for some people because it'll also like interrupt fast travel and stuff, but overall it's um, more good than bad, I'd say. See, where jackals can summon foxes and coyotes, werewolves can summon wargs. So yeah, um, where creatures can summon, you know, a wider pool of monsters. Allow taming monkeys and apes with bananas. So um, that becomes a, um, I guess, a treat for those um, types of monsters. So I didn't realize you can tame the apes. I knew that about monkeys. So that's interesting. You need a tame ape. Um, that might actually be a decent pet. 
Let's see, uh, Peacefuls may react when you attack other Peacefuls. Um, so I tested this earlier, and it seemed like if you kill a Peaceful, um, other Peacefuls around... Um, well, I did it with Gnomes in the mines. So when I killed a Gnome, two Peaceful Gnome Lords that were around, they both got scared and they turned hostile. So um, I don't know if that affects things differently, if they're not the same race or, or monster type. Um, but that was my... My quick test of that, so that's what happens there. Um, prevent diagonal jumping through open doorways. Yeah, so I thought this was interesting because I, that used to be, to me, one of the the big benefits of jumping, especially like on the astral plane and um, different areas like that, is that you could jump diagonally, diagonally through a doorway. Um, I suppose that wasn't intended behavior, um, so they changed that. So just be aware of that. Um, random horses have a tiny chance of being generated saddled. So that just gives you an opportunity to find more saddles in the dungeon. Um, it makes sense. I like it. Give feedback just before time the levitation runs out. Um, so if you have levitation from like the potion or something that's going to run out at some point, it'll it'll give you an indicator that you're running out of time. Um, I've looked this up before. I don't remember off the top of my head how many turns you get. Um, I was going to throw out a number that I think it is, but I don't want to mislead you guys if I'm way off there. So I'm um, just go look it up if you're curious or try it yourself. Um, but it just warns you in case you know you're levitating over lava or something like, hey, get get over uh, get to a safe place before this runs out. See, so travel accepts M uh, prefix, so that's what I showed you earlier. Um, that gives you some more options um, to you know travel to like the fountains or different like places. Let's see, Bless scroll of fire lets you choose explosion location like stinking cloud. So that makes a blessed scroll of fire actually um, somewhat useful. <laughs> it used to just destroy you. Or burn you so um i this is the i just learned about this so i actually want to try that um i'm not sure how much damage that does but um, especially early on if you find one that it's actually somewhat useful now so that's good it's one of the, the scrolls that don't have a whole lot of uses let's see option um force an inventory menu to make commands asking for inventory items always use a menu instead of text line query so that's what I mentioned earlier, and when I was trying to apply that crystal ball, it went straight to my inventory instead of giving me that um, that single line prompt, which that's just something that a lot of people have wanted. Um, I actually don't mind the single line prompt, so I'll probably leave it, but the option is there. Option hit point bar to show a bar graph of hit points um, behind title field. So that's what this is. So if I get like attacked, um, let me see here. I have a hit points bar. Um, it changes in color and it reduces. So you see that bar changing there, and that's what that changes. So that's a it's just a nice visual um, representation. Um, let's see. Wielding Troll's Bane prevents troll corpses from reviving. Um, so you just have to wield it. Um, you don't have to kill them with it. And I, if you unwield it, they'll be able to revive again. Um, but this is just, all of these are just improvements they made to, you know, a lot of the Bane artifacts were, were just worthless. Like, you wouldn't even pick them up. So um, they don't have like a ton of extra utility now, but there's little features to them now that make them um, intriguing options at certain points of the game. So that's one for Troll's Bane. Um, troll corpses won't be revived. Um, Demon's Bane prevents demons summoning, um, basically demon gaining or demon summoning. Um, so demons have a chance in the attack of bringing it, like summoning demons, so it prevents that if you have it wielded. Um, Dragon Bane confers reflection, which is pretty huge. Um, I wonder if... I'm gonna have to keep, keep that in mind. Um, I wonder if you know you're like struggling to find reflection. It, it's probably not a terrible idea to you know try and get a few sacrifice gifts to to get Dragon's Bane now. Um, that could be pretty useful because I mean Dragon's Bane is what a, a long sword. It's not a terrible base item either. So the fact that it gives reflection that can be pretty nice if you don't have reflection yet. So that's a that's a pretty big improvement there. Wielding Ogre Smasher um, grants twenty five Constitution. So that works kind of like Gauntlets of Power do for strength. Um, you can exploit that, I'm pretty sure, still, um, by wielding that right before you gain level, and then it'll give you an extra modifier to, 
to your max HP you gain, and then you can just like unwield it. So that's an effect there. And I'm pretty sure at 25 constitution, you get a, a higher passive health regeneration rate. So you can do that as well. Let's see, Cleaver can hit three adjacent monsters with one swing. Y you know, I wanted to test this one out too, because I actually haven't used a Cleaver yet. So um, let's pick a Barbarian, because that would be appropriate, right? And what I'm gonna do, let me just teleport to a room, more space. I wish up Cleaver. Wield that. And how about So let's just try swinging it to my left. Yeah, so it attacks, you know, the direction in front of you that you swing at, and then the two tiles on each side of it. So that's a pretty cool fix for the cleaver. Um, just watch out because I believe it will attack peacefuls, and um, that could be dangerous in certain situations. So let's keep that in mind. See, the master key of thievery warns about undetected traps if wielded without gloves. I haven't tested that, but that has some utility there. I mean, you're not going to be wanting to wield the, the the key instead of like a weapon a lot of the times, but um, especially if you're concerned about polymorph traps or something, I could definitely see some utility there. See, the Master Key of Thievery uh, always finds door and chest traps if used to lock or unlock a trap door or chest. Uh, while uncursed for rogues, or non-cursed for rogues, or blessed for non-rogues. So that's a... I mean, hey, you don't have to untrap chests anymore. You can just, you know, apply the, the master key. So it's a nice feature of that. Elbereth. So Elbereth changed um, a bit in 3.6.1 from 3.6.0. So um, you probably are aware that Elbereth was largely nerfed in 3.6.0 from its 3.4.3 um, implementation, which um, I do think 3.4.3 was a, a little overpowered. So I don't, I don't mind the nerf in general. But um, I'd say they went a little overboard with it. So what would happen is in 3.6.0, Elbereth would um, fade away. I guess it wouldn't fade. It would, um, you know, change. When, or degrade is the word I was looking for. And when it scared a monster. So, like, if I was in this situation, and I engraved Elbereth, well, I'm in 3.6.1, so you won't be able to tell. It would scare one monster, um, and this is for Dusted Elbereth, and then the rest of the monsters would not care, and they would just keep attacking me because it would have degraded right then. So now it stays there until you take a hostile action and then disappears and gives you an alignment hit. So you can... It's a, it's a much more useful safe spot now. If you don't attack, you can sit on it for a while. And also, it's... Let's see... It must now, so that's this one, uh, it erodes based on text by the player, not monster scared. And Elbereth now must be the only engraved text on a square to function. So you can't add like any, any extra characters at the end of the string or before it and have it work. That has to be just Elbereth. So before, um, I used to add like an X to the end just because it would give you like one extra letter that could degrade without affecting Elbereth. Um, but you can't do that anymore. Um, I do wonder if you can use Elbereth with a capital B, because the capital B sometimes degrades to a lowercase b. I don't know, you want to try it? Let's just uh, write with the Wand of Digging. So yeah, that still works. So you can do that. Right, that's probably the most optimal way to write Elbereth now. Because if that capital B um, erodes, it just turns into a, a lower, or it sometimes turns into a lowercase b. So that's like a really, really maximizing optimization kind of kind of tactic. It will only occur in a very, very, very small number of circumstances. But if you're trying to take every advantage you can get, um, that is technically uh, more optimal. So yeah, some uh, some big Elbereth changes. Elbereth is now much more powerful than it was in 3.6.0 um, and it is ripe for, for use um, by the player to get you out of some tough situations. 
Um, I've, I've used it in the few 361 games I've played, and it is night and day from 361, um, it, or from 360. It's uh, very powerful again. But not quite as on the same level as it was in 343, that's for sure. Let's see, a prayer result, which results in uncursing some or all the hero's items, won't uncurse a worn helm of opposite alignment, since that would facilitate the hero switching to another god by taking it off. So yeah, you can't pray to remove a um, helm of opposite alignment, so just keep that in mind. Let's see, uh, Wielded Aklis, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Behave, so that's the unidentified appearance of that is Thonged Club. Um, you see that in the mines, gnomes drop them all the time. Behaves like Mjolnir when thrown, um, it usually returns, but like it works for anyone. So I thought, I, I just learned about this when I was going through this change log. That, Actually seems like it's pretty useful. Um, the flavor behind that is I guess uh, that's a type of spear or club that has like a like a leather strap on it or something. So you're supposed to be able to like recover it after you throw it. Um, they don't do a ton of damage, but if you enchanted one to like plus seven, like I could see that being a, a decent weapon. Or just for anyone even, just early on. If you, you know, run out of daggers or darts or something, just to have something you could throw, um, it, that could be somewhat useful. Um, I believe it uses the club um, weapon type for enhancing and skill. So I'm not sure what roles that might be useful for. I'd have to look through that because I, I don't really upgrade club ever. Um, but that, uh, I, that was a pretty interesting change. Um, a, a neat nerf to a pretty much pointless weapon <laughs> previously. So I'm gonna try and use some of those in my, my next games. Um, hey, that's it. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I think we got through that pretty quick, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna upload this to YouTube and I'm also gonna highlight it on, or make a highlight of it on Twitch. So it'll be permanently on Twitch as well. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll, uh, and this here. So thanks again for watching, guys. That was a uh, good review. And uh, let me let me know if there were any anything I missed, or if there are any questions about any of this stuff, or if I uh, hopefully not. But if I, you know, had any uh, false information in there, I was describing everything, and I will um, rectify it as best as I can. I can annotate the YouTube video and stuff. So just let me know um, if anything's incorrect or needs to be added in there. Um, but yeah, I hope that is helpful for anyone that, um, you know, wants to make that adjustment from 360 to 361 and just wants to know some of the changes. So there you have it. And thanks again.